Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are making a sticking board. Uh, this is something that I have, I've been meaning to do over and over again for years and it's always been one of those topics. Well, I'll cover it next time when I get this project. Oh, I'll, I'll do next. It's time to do it. Let's dive in. Only the best white oak and only the best cheap pine. This is a relatively easy project and somewhat simple, but if you're going to be doing a lot of molding or small piece management, this is really kind of a, a necessary tool in the shop. A sticking board allows you to put grooves and details and molding onto small pieces that are, are difficult to hold onto. So there's going to be a sub base piece, which I'm using this chunk of pine that I had. It's actually a really nice piece of clear pine. Uh, it's one inch by six inches solid. And uh, I milled this up for a project years ago and it's been sitting around and I thought, ah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and use this one. So uh, this will be uh, what holds these depth stops. And I'll have a link to these on the description below. They're relatively simple. And a lot of times if you have them flush with a bench top, they tend to clog up and fill with junk. Uh, but for something like this where they're open and you can just blow them out afterwards, it actually worked pretty well. So rather than recessing them into um, two separate pockets, I'm going to pay, make a large rabbit on the end of this and then carve out grooves for their rounded surfaces so that they can fit down into that. And so I'm going to start with a saw to cut down um, to the correct depth on the piece to create my depth stop. And then I'm going to come in with the router plane. And uh, I thought I would you know, bring the router plane in and take it down close to it, but I realized I really got a long way to go and the router plane is a bit slow for something like that. So I'm going to come back in with my shoulder plane and, uh, excuse me, my, my rabbit plane and I'm going to take that down. I would have been using my number 10, but unfortunately it's one of those things that I need to fix. I just haven't gotten to it. So this actually works really well to get it close, and then I can come in with the router plane and take it right down to the edge. Um, except for it wasn't quite as close as I thought, so let's bring that back in, and then the router plane again. And now we're down at the depth we want it to be. <laughs> um, so this doesn't have to be terribly important because it does rest on uh, several of these rounded grooves that will be going into it. And uh, you'll see those here in a moment. Cut off any of the extra scragglers on there, and uh, now we can lay out where these rounded grooves need to go for the hinge and the uh, the, the, the other rounded sections. And so I'm going to basically create a groove rounded that it fits into. And this may seem like, ooh, how in the world do I do this? But it's actually really, really easy. If you've ever done a blood groove on a cutting board, um, I've got a whole video on that as well if you want to see that. But this actually goes in really well. Mark out the two sides. Find a gouge that is close to the radius you want, and then with a little bit of a stabbing motion, you can get a really nice clean round edge that, that will fit down. As with anything with hand tools, take your time, take it slowly, and test often, make correct corrections, and then do it slowly again. So I'm working with one groove until it gets close to the right size, and then I can start working on the other groove. This one needed the edges rounded, so I flipped the gouge over and just used it to round the edge just a little bit. Then we can start working on the second gouge. Yeah, this one needs two gouges, and you really don't need to make two gouges. The second one you could cut out small rabbits beside the big circle hole we'll be putting in in a minute. But I figured, well, since I've got the gouge out here, might as well do it. And it goes really quickly just to create this gouge, and it's a good practice to try something a little different. Again, practice this stabbing motion. It actually works very well to give you a decent amount of control. We want to make sure it goes down deep enough so that it will rest on there and uh, not stick above the, the top. So I needed to do a little bit more rabbit plane to take it down a hair more, and then that meant I needed to come in and gouge out a little bit more just to get it down to depth. Also, when you put the, uh, the, the depth stop in there, you will notice that it rubs on the wood and will leave marks where you need to take off more material. And once we get this close, now we need to drill a three-quarter inch hole for the center shaft to fit down into. And thankfully it is centered on that large groove, so it goes in pretty well. So we're gonna drill a three quarter inch hole, come at it from both sides so we don't blow out the edge, and I need a second one. One of these I'm putting in fairly close to flush with the end, and the other one I'm gonna put in right beside it. Uh, this will give me the space I need so I can put in larger pieces, or I can put in little pieces and balance back and forth. The nice thing about shop projects is it's a great time to learn a new skill. They don't have to be perfect. And this is a chance you can kind of stretch yourself and try something a little bit different. Now on this, you can see how I have them spaced out here. I need to make marks and I couldn't find my all, so I used my depth stop. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> you use what you got. <laughs> Pre-drill holes, and then we're gonna put in these tiny little brass screws to make sure that they don't move around. 
And then it's just reassembly. There's a spring that goes inside, a bolt that goes down through it, and then you can adjust this so you can have a different uh, you have a different end stop on here that is at whatever height you need. So if you're working with thin stock, you can have a really thin piece on here. And they screw down in, lock in place, and uh, they work really well. Just make sure they're flush with the end. Next, we need to put a fence on this. Now, I need a fence that runs the whole length of this board, I, uh, I but I, I need to make it movable so that I can have it up to three-quarter inch from the edge and then slowly move back by three-quarter inch increments. And the easiest way to do this is to drill a bunch of holes and then have the holes even on the bit to make them, well, you'll, you'll see in a minute. It gets a little confusing. So I need to have two different sides. I need one that's a bit loose, like this, and then I need one that is really good and tight. First thing I want to do is create stops so that this board will lock down to the bench. And so for that, I'm going to put the board on the bench, put the, the hole up through it, pound in a, uh, a spot so I know exactly where it's at, and then drill the holes into the board. And on this, I'm going to put in two dowels that will locate into the dog holes on my bench. These are going to be a little longer dog holes because they need to go through the one inch of the pine and then the three inches-ish of the bench. I'm going to chamfer the ends so that they will go into the dog holes easily. And then they can go in. Now, for some of these small ones, I find that using a rasp is easier than using a, uh, a plane. So kind of play it by ear and see which one you like. And uh, they both do the same thing. They'll chamfer and clean up the end and give it a little bit of pointiness. I'm also going to need uh, three smaller dowels that are about two inches. These smaller dowels will go through this fence and then into the base. Um, so somewhere around, well, the, the, the fence is three-quarter inch tall and the base is one inch, so you don't want them longer than an inch and three-quarter. Um, I think I made mine just a little over an inch and a half long. And then I have another drill bit, and this one is actually auger bit. This one is actually a little bit tighter. This will create a small hole um, that I really have to pound these into to get a good fit. I'm going to be drilling a hole 6 inches in, 36 inches in, and 66 inches in. I made sure I had a very specific tick mark on all of them so that the hole was precisely where it needed to be along this. And the hole measurement on this is very, um, it, you have to make it accurate because you're going to be drilling the corresponding holes into the base as well. And you're going to be drilling a bunch of those so you can move them from one to the other. In the fence, we're going to then glue in the short dowels. And then into the base, we're going to be gluing in the long dowels. Um, and these will then stick out so now this fence can fit into the holes in the base. These are the base dowels, which will get the longer ones, and these then go into the bench to make this whole thing stop from moving end to end. So dowels in the base go into the bench, dowels in the fence go into the base, if that makes sense. But with one, those on there, we can flush them up, clean them up, and then we can start getting ready to drill all the holes into the base so that the fence can go into it. Now it's very important that these all be the same distance in from the middle. And so I'm drilling... A, holes that are inch and a half in and then three quarter inch increments in after that. I'm also staggering them by an inch and a half uh, and this will allow me to move the fence um, back and forth across the base without running into previous holes. Uh, it means the fence uh, will be a little bit farther away from the depth stop in some locations but it's not a, a big issue. So we can make sure that our holes are precisely the same length from the end as we drilled on the fence and then all corresponding lengths away from the front. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of confusing, but once you see it, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. So you can see I'm drilling five holes so that my fence can be five different distances away from the front edge uh, within three quarter inch increments. So at each location, five holes, and those holes are all corresponding nice. to be the same like distance apart so that the fence can move from that. one to the next to the next, and then into the next. And I had one that was a bit tight, so I had to come back and file that one out a little bit better, um, just because that one hole was off by an eighth inch or so. But with a little bit of file work, it got it down in, and it now fits in. So we can slide it from one spot to another to another. And then I can put in thin stock, and it slides and pushes up against the fence on the back, and then the stops on the end. And I can work with really thin stock or thicker stock, and I can do all of my sticking and molding on this. Works great for holding things in place, for running grooves, uh, molding, and other things like that. I'm really happy with all this, and I've got a few projects coming up, so um, hmm, this is going to be fun to play with. Hee. 
So there you go, sticking board. Uh, this is great anytime you're using molding or you're doing long, thin strips. You want to all be the same. You really can't clamp them end to end. They want to pop up in the middle. Uh, this is the kind of thing you want. Now, I'm limited now to the size of my shop, so it's just a little over six foot long. Um, but if I had a bigger shop, I'd probably make it about eight foot because occasionally you're working with eight foot stock. But with this setup, with the fence, I can move the fence in and out. I can change where the stops are and how high they're up, and I can plane stuff down to an eighth of an inch. This will allow me to do a lot of other fine detail that I wouldn't be able to do um, otherwise or have a lot of other problems. You'll often see me use double-sided tape to stick things down to the bench to plane them. Um, and this is a lot more elegant than that. So this is kind of a fun one. I have a little bit of tweaking to do on it to make it work right but I kind of like how this is coming together. So if you like this or would like to see more information on it, let me know. I do have links to the hardware. Uh, it's a really straightforward system and uh, I, I kind of like it. Quick and easy project. So if you do a lot of molding, this is probably what you're gonna make. I hope you like this. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, things I could have done better on this, let me know down, that down in the comments. I do read through all of them and I answer as many as I possibly can. So thank you for that. Uh, also, if you want to help out the channel, hit like, comment, share, subscribe. Those things really help out and keep the channel going. And uh, thank you for that. Also, oh, look, all those patrons over there. They are patrons on Patreon. We also have people who have clicked the join button down below and become members. And we have special things for them, such as live behind the scenes recordings for making things like this. If you'd like to find out more about that, link to Patreon down below or click the little join button and become a member. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. This is a sticking board. It is there to get you out of sticky situations.